on this lovely holiday in this beautiful holy sanctuary in a very meaningful holy worship dedicated to the families as a family sunday to be with you all and to worship with you all and to bring god's word i would love to say a big thanks and hallelujahs to the lord jesus christ and secondly i would like to thank the pastor devputraya and also the secretary the treasurer and also the committee members for thinking of me and for having me this morning in this lovely worship before i you know speak or the lord speak through me i would love to say to all the families a happy family day god bless you all with many many more lovely family years filled with joy peace and happiness this morning such a wonderful service with full of lovely meaningful songs some sung by the lovely couple some as a family some by children it was so wonderful to hear such melodious voices where i felt as though the angels from heaven have come down and were singing so lovely voices i praise god for all those lovely songs that was sung when i was a pastor for a church where two families were living opposite to one another they both happened to be my church members both were church we are regular members paying their subscriptions taking active part in the church activities and they were all in all in the church both the families but one family always was full of life joy and happiness but the other family was not happy as the other one was one day the head of the family that was not happy all the time told his elder son hey son go and see what is that really making that family so happy the elder son of that family went into the family that was always full of happiness joy the moment he went in you know he saw all the family members of that family were living so happily the family was sitting in front of the tv and watching a tv the child came back to his father and said dada because they have such a wonderful color tv you know of such a big size you know i saw all the family sitting before that and enjoying then the father immediately the very evening he went and bought a bigger tv and put it up and the whole family sat and were watching it the joy of that was only for few days then again the same thing started no happiness sad no life no vibrancy nothing then immediately the head of the family said son your analysis was not that correct i think so let's send your sister this time and the the daughter was sent to the opposite family who are very much with joy living with full of life and happiness the moment the little girl 
went into the family that was always happy. You know, she saw it was a summer. And they were all enjoying a lovely ice cream that was made by the mother of that family because, you know, it was made at home. And the little girl watched over everything and said, oh, because they have such a lovely big size, jumbo size fridge, refrigerator, so that's why they could make such a lovely, you know, finger licking ice cream. So, might be because of the fridge. And the little girl came back home and told daddy, the whole family made such a beautiful ice cream in the jumbo size fridge. And they are eating and I saw them enjoying, laughing, smiling. Then the father thought, because of the refrigerator. He went and bought the big, bigger refrigerator than what the, the friends had. They had that. Summer got over and the joy got over. Back to the square, you know, hard days. Days with no life. Then one day, the father said, might be the son is wrong. The daughter is also wrong in the analysis. So they sent the youngest son, the youngest one. Son, you go as a child. You can really do a better job than your brother and sister. Go and see. The little child, the moment they were, he went to their house, the whole family was coming down. This little child was watching, you know, all the family with full of smile, joy, cheer, walking down to the staircase. And moment he was observing, the whole family sat on a lovely motorcycle and they were all going and the children of that happy family were waving their hands to this little boy. The little child thought, because they have a motorcycle, they are happy. They got, he went and told, daddy, brother was wrong, sister was wrong, but now I can say the real joy why they are so happy is because they have a motorcycle. The father next day went and bought a motorcycle. Then they all began to go. For a few days that lasted the joy. Finally, he thought, hey, my children did not do the job correctly. They were not able to analyze. So he himself went to the opposite neighbor and uh, told him, Sir, brother, we both go to the same church. We both are members. We both worship the same Lord. You know, we do everything almost the same. And we are, both the families, so active in the church. But why your family is always found to be, you know, radiating with joy, happiness, full of peace in your family, which I do not have in my family. One day I sent my son, eldest son, he came up saying that because you have a very big TV, you all are really happy. And I bought a bigger TV for a bigger joy in our family, but that did not last. That was not true. Then, I sent my daughter, she came back saying that because you have a very big refrigerator, you know, you're all happy making so many lovely things during summer. And I brought it, it was not true. My youngest son, he saw that because you have a lovely motorcycle, you are so happy going around. But that also did not come true. The friend said, Brother, you wanted to have everything, you know, that I have. But you did not have one thing that I have. You had what I have. You had the refrigerator. You have the TV. You have the motorcycle. You had everything that what we have in our house. 
But one thing you did not think of having it. That is Jesus Christ. You did not want to have that Jesus whom we have in our house. It's not because of the TV. It's not because of the fridge. It's not because of the motorcycle. It is because of Jesus in our family. That's the reason why we are happy. So you took the fridge, you took the TV, you took the motorcycle, but you did not take Jesus into your family, who is the real foundation for the joy in our family. Children, remember the lovely chorus that you learn in your Sunday school. I know there are people, you know, who have not forgotten this lovely chorus that you learn years and years, decades back, when you were attending the Sunday school. We learned it, but we have not ever, never experienced it, some of you. Some of you may not even, you know, thought of singing it once again. What you sang when you were a child. I don't know how many of you have sung that lovely chorus, having got married with your lovely husband, with your lovely children. Forgotten. But that's the crux of your family life. Jesus in the family, happy, happy home, happy, happy home, happy, happy home. Jesus in the family, happy, happy home, happy, happy home. Today in this modern world, we try to make ourselves happy. We try to make our families happy, minusing Jesus and having everything in our houses. That's the reason why today families, you know, do not experience our living happily. We think we have, if we have that, we'll be happy. Children think, if we have this, we will be happy. Young ones, you think that if you have this in your house, you'll be happy. But you will be happy only when Jesus is in your family. On this family Sunday, I would love to say that, you know, what we have learned in our Sunday schools, the Lord says, remind that this morning. You sung one day, but today you begin to practice it now. What you sung, what you learned, and what you sung years and years back, now having you become a family, sing that and sing that with an experience. Lord, without you, there is no happiness in our family. The second thing that I always think about is many families that I visit, especially when I was a pastor, I see a lovely caption being hanged in the families on the walls, but not in practice. Almost, I do not know some of your families, in your houses also you have that. But I, this morning, is that in practice? Is that in practice this morning? The family that prays together stays together. Many houses I see this. The family that prays together stays together. When was the last time that you had a family prayer? Just recollect. When was the last time that as a family, together holding hands, singing a chorus, reading the Bible, and praying together as a family?
dear friends even in this kind of hectic schedule of my life even sometimes when i go to my home at night 2 o'clock or 1:30 there will never be a night that my mother who is 89 years young and my wife and myself there would be never a day that passes by without a family prayer even that night today as a family we are being blessed because of the lovely family prayer today we rejoice because of that lovely family prayer. this morning you might have had at the beginning of your married life and today you might have given it up because of various reasons priorities have changed the family prayer has not just in the priority list but have disappeared in our priority list but this morning the good lord says he wants to remind us if you turn your bible to psalm 128 that was read to us as a responsive reading mm-hmm. that's the one which the lord want to say that this morning the secret of you of your wife your children and because of your family your neighborhood and your nation to be blessed the secret lies in psalm 128 many of you think i'm okay but why my wife is not that blessed we both husband and wife are doing so well but what's wrong with our children why we cannot rejoice over when we see our children you know why we are not that much happy dear friends if you turn your bibles to psalm 128 there the lord says you know blessed is everyone who fears the lord and walk in his footsteps family here this morning the word of god says not just you everyone whether you are rich whether you are poor whoever it is from whatever walk of life you come from you know everyone who fears the lord here the word fears means it is not really you know as you think it is if you honor the lord one who honors the lord one who respects the lord one who pays due respects to the lord you know and walks it is not just coming and paying respects like this you may think i go every sunday to church i give my offering you know if the pastor says read the bible i read the bible you know you do everything you pay respects you pay honor but there is another thing that the lord says walk in my footsteps one thing is not enough in your life families families you may honor the lord you may respect the lord but as a family are you walking according to the will of the lord are you walking as a family you know as the lord wants you as a family what are the things that are being done in your family what is being said in your family is those things that really lord rejoices what about the praises in your family when was it last time you sang a lovely song for jesus as a family when was it last time 
that you knelt and prayed as a family, mm. thanking the Lord. When was the last time that you took Bible as a family and prayed? That is what walking in the footsteps of the Lord. He says, one who respects the Lord, one who fears the Lord, and one who walks in the footsteps of the Lord. The Lord says, one thing, he says, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you. He says, I will bless you in such a way that your hard-earned labor would be blessed. Imagine what is that. Many a times, people work hard, but they cannot enjoy the fruit of it. They cannot enjoy the fruit of it. Today, there might be some people here who work hard, who did work hard, but today they are not able to enjoy, but they are to just see others enjoying. I know, most of you know Birla, one of the richest fellow in this country. He, he doesn't know how many companies he has. One day, when I was passing in a place where his company is located, it so happened one evening when I went for the house visiting, I saw that the whole company was illuminated so colorfully I asked one of my church members, hey, what's this? I haven't never seen this place being so colorfully decorated. Then the church member said, Aya, the company owner, Birla, is coming. And that's the reason why it is decorated so beautifully. And I was expressing my surprise. He said, yeah, you are surprised by this. But you know, if you really see the banquet, the spread that is spreaded out on the, for the dinner, you'll be amazed. You know, cooks come from all over India. The kind of food items that are cooked and served to all the dignitaries who come for that night dinner... You can't count them. So many dishes are prepared. Cooked from Bangalore, cooked from Calcutta, cooked from Delhi, from various parts of this country, they come and cook. And after telling the whole thing, he said, Can you believe, Aya, what Birla is going to eat? He is going to eat Two chapati, that's all. And that too without oil. And he has to eat a vegetable curry without oil. All that he eats is only these two things. For whom the rest of it? It is for the others. Cannot enjoy his own labor. Dear brothers and sisters, in your family, all your labor today, where are you in that kind of, you know, brackets, enjoying? Are you able to enjoy your fruit of your labor? Or somebody is enjoying? You might be thinking, why, why I worked so hard and why my family is not able to enjoy it? Because might be somewhere you have lost strong. Begin to fear the Lord and begin to walk in his footsteps. Surely you will enjoy, your wife will enjoy, your children will enjoy. And the second thing that we read in verse 3 is, in the verse 3 we see about the wife. 
today, not only you, if you fear the Lord and you walk in the footsteps of the Lord, not only you would enjoy, but your wife will also be a fruitful wife. A fruitful wife. A wife that brings a lot of joy. A wife who is always going to be, you know, a beneficial. A wife who is going to add blessing to your family. A wife who is going to bring life into your family. A fruitful wife. No regrets. No regrets. Never you regret. Why on earth I married this woman? No. Today you would rejoice because if you walk in his footsteps, if you fear the Lord, you honor the Lord, your wife would be a blessing to you. She would bring such a great joy into your family. And the third thing, your children would be blessed. Your children would be like olive shoots. The word of God says, why did the psalmist compare the children with the olive shoots? Imagine olive tree is such a wonderful tree. It is always greenery all through 365 days. Now when you see an olive leaf dried. 365 days, the olive tree will remain green only. Do you want to experience that in your children? All the time your children with full of life. All the time your children with full of, you know, happiness. And not only that, among all the trees, it was known that it grows up to 20 meters. The tall. The olive tree grows to 20 feet, 20 meters. Imagine children growing up so high beyond your imagination. You would experience the joy. You would be happy. And not just that, you know, it is such a tree, olive tree is such that nobody can ever destroy that tree. No fire can destroy. You know, no disease of any plants can destroy it. And not only that, no, nobody can, no weather can ever destroy it. Even if anybody can destroy up to the ground level, the olive shoot once again comes up. Why did the psalmist refer this plant to the young ones, your children? Take courage, parents. Take courage. If you walk in the fear of God and in his footsteps, no ever evil can ever destroy your children. Nobody can do any harm. Even if anybody does harm, your children will once again rise up. Once again you see them flourishing. It's provided you fear the Lord and you walk in the footsteps of the Lord. Has anyone's children been destroyed by something? Do you have any young children whose life has been, you know, tarnished, whose life is broken, whose life has been gone into shambles. Cheer up. The Lord assures you, if you walk in the footsteps of the Lord, and have the fear of God. Your son, your child, your daughter will rise again. They will rise again. They will never be destroyed. They can never be destroyed. And the sign of peace, imagine olive plant, the olive branch is a sign of peace. 
today is your child a young grown up child is he a sign of peace in your family israelites always hold a branch of olive plant and say hey i am in peace if one wants to tell you know that family is in peace they hold us you know piece of olive branches express that they are in peace today do you want your son to be a peace to your family cheer up cheer up have the fear of god and walk in his footsteps your child today who is making you sleepless nights your young son who is making you roll in tears in the bed in the nights your young daughter who is making your days bitter ask god i want my son and my daughter to be a sign of peace in my family lord he says if you fear the lord father mother if you fear the lord and you walk in the footsteps of the lord you are young children will be a peace to your family and finally i would love to say he says the family that fears the lord and who walks in his footsteps will receive blessings from zion from zion it's a zion is a holy city zion is a place where god dwells Zion is a place from where the blessings are generated. The Lord says, "I'm going to give those blessings if you have the fear of the Lord and walk in the footsteps." I do not know how many of you families would love to have blessings from Zion this morning. A place from where the blessings are generated do you want to claim that blessing jesus give me this today a blessing from zion lord so that we may always be blessed as a husband as a wife as a children and not only we lord through us we want the rest to also be be blessed may the good lord bless you all on this family sunday blessings from zion god bless you all